Rights Group Amnesty International has asked the Jordanian government to arrest Sudanese President Omar al Bashir and to hand him over to the International Criminal Court, the ICC, in The Hague. Mr. Bashir, who is wanted by the ICC for genocide and war crimes committed in Darfur, is in Jordan for an Arab League summit. In a statement, Amnesty International says, quote, as a signatory to the Rome Statute that set up the ICC, Jordan is obligated to arrest Omar al Bashir and hand him over to the court. End of quote. Previous calls for Mr. Bashir to be arrested have been met with inaction. In 2015, South Africa's government snubbed an international arrest warrant and a court order allowing the Sudanese president to fly out of the country where he was attending an African Union summit. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has vowed to press for justice in the killing of two UN experts who were found dead on Tuesday in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mr. Guterres says he's devastated over the death of U.S. citizen Michael Sharp and Swiss national Zayda Katalin, who had been missing since March 13. Forensic pathologists are due to formally identify the bodies of the two experts using dental and DNA samples taken from their remains. The U.N. chief has also urged the Congolese authorities to continue the search for the four others still missing. Seventeen people have been arrested in the United Kingdom after a protest at Stansted Airport temporarily halted takeoffs and landings on Tuesday. Those involved were trying to stop a charter flight which they claim was due to deport people to Nigeria and Ghana. In total, 23 incoming flights were diverted to other airports. So let's get more on this story from an immigration lawyer, Dio Fadino, who joins us live from the United Kingdom. You're welcome to the program. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What more can you tell us about the protest at Stansted Airport? Well, indeed, uh, it's, it's, it's the truth, actually. Uh, it actually happened yesterday evening. Um, I think a group of um, protesters uh, who feel so strongly about uh, the situation to do with deportations uh, decided to um, uh, take over an aircraft um, at the airport yesterday, uh, protesting of uh, regard, protesting about the fact that uh, there are so many Africans, particularly Nigerians, Ghanaians, who are normally deported, uh, you know, uh, secretly these days, and um, they were so, so fed up about it. And uh, I'm not too surprised about what's happening right now. Uh, I think sometimes last year, um, I had, um, I did a short interview with, uh, with your channel, and I forewarned that this situation would uh, become worse under Theresa May's government, and uh, so I'm not particularly surprised that that's the situation right now. Now, we've been hearing reports that the UK government has been carrying out mass deportations that are deliberately rushed and are secretive. How true is this, and what could be responsible for that? Well, indeed, it's, that story is quite true. Quite true in the sense that uh, there have been so many deportations, um, you know, uh, under the present uh, government, uh, Theresa May's government. And uh, one question you then need to ask is why on earth would any government or any government department, you know, uh, decide to, you know, deport people secretly, en masse, uh, in, in the thick of the night? Uh, it smacks of something quite ominous, something quite, you know, secretive and, you know, not particularly of uh, good taste at all. Uh, this has been happening for, for a while now. And, um, it also smacks, uh, uh, with all due respect, I, I need to actually mention this, it also smacks of, uh, you know, you, you have that this undertone of racism, really, in the sense that how many Australian illegal immigrants, who are Australians, or New Zealanders, or, Austra or, or uh, Canadians, uh, how many of such people are pounced upon on the streets, you know, picked up and dragged to the airport mid of the night to, to, to be deported? You don't really have so many of such people at all. So, in, in, a, in a sense, I, I could send, I, I feel this indeed has a kind of racist undertone uh, behind it. Um, and uh, we really need to actually find a way of, uh, of stopping these deportations. Uh, these people are human beings. They are not just, they are not just, you know, wretched immigrants or aliens. They are human beings like you and I. And they have that right to, you know, that, that human right to dignity the human right to at least be respected, the human right to private life, and the human right to 
you know, go to uh, the due process of the law. And many of these deportations have not actually been following the due process of the law. Two years ago, I remember a Nigerian family, um, a, a lady, a mentally ill lady and a son, who were deported. And they, they, they were actually ordered to actually, the, the courts, uh, a high court judge actually ordered that these people should be brought back to, like, to, 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 to London because um, they were de just deported illegally without any due process. Uh, so these things have been happening for a while and it seems it's now getting worse uh, by the day and uh, something should be done about it. So let me just come in here. Is it possible for migrants who have been deported, should I say unlawfully, to challenge their deportation from their home countries? Is it possible for them to win their case and successfully return back to the United Kingdom? Well, there's that possibility. If that person was just picked up, um, you know, illegally, uh, I mean, and, and, the, 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 and the, the, the matter did not go through that due process of the law, uh, and, and that person is picked up illegally and deported, yes, that person could actually challenge that situation. Again, I, uh, I, I make reference to the point I just made earlier. In 2015, April, a Nigerian lady, mentally ill lady, and her son, a five-year-old son, uh, they were deported illegally, and a judge actually ordered that the family should be brought back to London uh, 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 because it was of the strong view uh, that that deportation itself was illegal, um, and uh, he, she, he actually uh, warned uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, the British government then, under Theresa May, who was the Home Secretary at that point, that if they should not, if they, if they do not actually find this woman and this, uh, this son, and her son, and, and bring them back to the UK, uh, they will be in contact of uh, court proceedings. So yes, it's possible for people to be able to challenge this if they feel that their human rights have been breached or they feel that they've uh, they've been deported illegally. And you know, being people being deported at mid of uh, at, at, at the tip of the night, it's marks of something very very ominous, very 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 secretive. Why would you want to actually deport people mid uh, at, at, the, at the tip of the night? Um, why would you not actually allow people? to go through due process properly. If a person has been living in this country for more than 24 years, like uh, the, the, the case I just referred to, living in this country for 24 years, the, the, the lady and her, and her son, five-year-old son, such people are now grounded in this country, and they have that right to private life, uh, they have a family, they, 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 they've possibly even lost ties uh, with their country of origin. Why on earth would any government uh, a decent government we want to actually deport such people after 24 years. It's it it it, it, it stinks actually. It's, it, it, it's 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 not of good taste at all. Well, immigration and human rights lawyer Dayo Fadino, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you very much. Uh, Still to come on the program, the African Union Commission chairman visits famine-hit South Sudan, calls for more humanitarian action. Stay with us for details.